Hey all you people out in the real world, I am Ken and you are watching Canadian Retro Things. Welcome to this video full of Nitrous 9 ease of use goodness. A little history about the topic that I'm going to be talking about today, which is a topic that is probably going to spin itself out into an entirely separate series of videos. Um, I like programming. I'm just not very good at programming. The language that I mostly know is basic. Um, you can do a lot of fun things programming in basic and I would like to learn more advanced programming languages, but you know, I haven't yet. So this is kind of a stepping stone. I am talking about basic 09. Now, it's not a big leap to go from BASIC to BASIC 09, but BASIC 09 is a faster, more powerful language than BASIC. So, I'm going to start showing it off to you here. So, let's get started. Alright, so what I'm going to be doing in this episode is not exactly teaching you how to program in BASIC 09. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of that. But mostly, I'm going to be showing you how simple it is to be doing some pretty complex things. Some stuff that basically would be almost impossible in regular basic. So obviously the first thing you have to do is get into basic 09. Well that is simple. You type basic 09. And when you have the B prompt that means you're in the system mode. Now from the system mode you can do things like run a program, save a program, load a program, um, uh, what you want to do though is you want to enter the edit um, says, uh, edit mode so you can easily do that by typing E you can type edit but E is a shortcut now if you don't name your program it's automatically called program and rather than a program they call them procedures here and one of the great things about basic 09 is that you can make up multiple little procedures and run them from one central procedure. So um, I'll, I'll do that in a minute but first off let's just show you a simple simple little program. So when you're in the edit mode the first space on the line is always used for one of your edit commands like uh, move forward a line, move back a line, um, delete a line, things like that. So if you actually want a line to be in the program, you have to put a space. The space means remember this line. And one of the great things is you do not have to use line numbers. You can use line numbers, it's just not necessary. Um, if you want to use a line number, it can be any number between 1 and 32,767. Um, but the only time that they're absolutely necessary is if you're going to use uh, something like a go to or go sub um, statement within your program and even then you don't actually have to, to number every line you can just number the lines that so if you wanted to have a go to statement just number the line that you want the um, program to go to that's the only one you have to actually have to give a number to Okay, and when you want to quit out of the edit mode, you just hit Q and you are back here in your system mode. Now, you can actually list the program and you'll notice that it's got the 000 um, in front of it there. Well, that is actually its memory location for when the program runs. Um, you can also go directory and you'll see that I have a program there. Program. Well, let's run it. And there we go. This is a program. Well, now I am going to make a little bit more complex of a program, which will consist of a couple of different procedures and then one main program that will use those procedures in. I'm going to jump ahead in uh, here with the magic of editing and we can take a look at the uh, programs that I come up with. 
All right, there you see I have made two programs, program one and program two. So I can list program one, and you'll see that it will basically print out a statement three times. List program two, and this one will print out a statement four times. Now the interesting thing that you may notice is that I use the same variable in both programs and one of the great things about it is for each procedure you can reuse variables and they don't conflict with each other because they're for that procedure only. All right, so now we will, let's make a program called main and Start it off with run program one, run program two, print I ran two programs. Quit. And there you go. That is the program. So it's got two run statements and a print statement. So now we will run main and it executed procedure one, procedure two, and then printed out I ran program or I ran two programs. So uh, it can come in very handy. You can make a procedure that does one thing within a program and then call it multiple times throughout your main program. It's uh, quite a powerful little way of programming. Okay, what I am going to show you now is one of the most interestingly powerful things you can do with BASIC 09, and that is call an outside program, something that's not in BASIC 09. So basically anything that is outside in the Nitrous 9 uh, program that you have in the background, you can call that to be run in BASIC 09. So let me just show you. So here's the sound files. You've got a bunch of sound files in here that you can uh, simply play um, by using the play command. So there you go, play a car horn. Um, and you can put any WAV files, uh, Mac files, uh, there's Amiga files, I'm, it plays all kinds of different files. And uh, so it's really quite powerful and it's very simple to get one of your basic 09 uh, programs to play one of these files. And I will show you. So back here, um, you're going to start a procedure called sound. Let's print something out. Print. This is a sound. Now the the uh, command for getting out into the outside of Basic 09 is shell. So shell, and then I'm going to play, and then you have to put the entire directory. My um path here. There we go. So it should play and now so here is our program. And that took me all of what? 10 seconds, 30, 15 seconds. If I could type faster it would take me about five seconds to write. So there we go, and it is simple as that to put sound effects into your basic games with Basic 09. And then you may ask yourself, well, is Basic 09 very fast? So I put together a completely non-scientific experiment here. I wrote a simple little program right here. So the basic little program that I wrote is simply a reoccurring loop of 500 times and on each incursion of the loop I am 
multiplying the loop number by itself, so basically squaring the number, and then printing it out. So let's take a look at who's the fastest. So I'm running this program in Basic 09, a stock Coco 3, a uh, Commodore 64, and a, an Atari XEGS. And they're off. And there we go. Oh, and uh, Basic 09 is done. And the Commodore and the Atari finished at about the same time. And coming in last is the stock Coco 3. Um, Basic 09 finished quite a bit ahead of everybody else. So it does that simple little program pretty fast. All right, now it is time to uh, play around with something. This is a program that Curtis showed me how to do, so thank you, Curtis. Uh, a simple little program that creates an overlay window. Uh, okay, load. And as you can see, it prints out a bunch of uh, numbers to the screen then creates the overlay window that says done running the program, press enter to quit. Well, how complicated would that be? Well, it was exactly this complicated. So going through this program, you can see dim C integer means that you're defining the C um, variable as an integer. And then run BFX to clear, clears the screen. Now I'll link a um, manual down in the uh, description of the video that has um, a lot of uh, definitions of all of the commands you can use here. In the manual, they always use run gfx2 or run gfx. Now the difference is that bfx2 actually runs a little bit faster but you have to change it all to GFX2 if you're going to pack the program, which is kind of uh, making it so you can't edit the program anymore, kind of compiling the program so it can't be edited or uh, changed in any way anymore. Um, but you, So you have to use GFX or GFX2 for all of the statements in that, but um, that's more complicated stuff for a future video. So we'll just continue with this. So the next thing is it does a reoccurring for 24 times of printing that line out 24 times and then run BFX to OW set. That's um, establish an overlay window. So that's what you're doing right there. You're establishing an overlay window. You're giving it all the parameters it needs, which are in that book. It will tell you what each of those numbers means. And then the print and the input lines that follow it are uh, done inside that overlay window. And uh, when it's done executing that code, you run the BFX2 OW end, which closes the overlay window. That's all there is to it. And the overlay windows are something that is so good to use in so many things like games and everything else. And it's so easy to do in Basic 09. So. Yeah, there you go. That is how you create an overlay window. All right, the last thing that I'm going to show you is this little program that Curtis showed me how to do. And it is basically the first program that I showed you with a couple extra lines. The first two lines there that you can see right after the definition of the C variable. Um, run DW end and run DW set. Now that is device window. So what you're doing in that first one is closing the current device window, which is actually a text graphics, a uh, text window. And you're opening a new window that will allow different things like graphics. And then you're clearing the screen and then you're doing the recursive 24 lines, but this time you are changing the font of each line. So basically this is just showing you some of the fonts that basic 09 can do. And there you go. That is a bunch of the fonts 
Um, you've got bold ones and unreadable ones. My favorite is the second from last, the t number 23 there, which is printed backwards. So, that is this little program. That's all it took to, uh, you know, just one line, just by typing that run BFX to font, you can change the font of uh, what you're doing. You can open up new windows. It's all very useful, very simple to do in Basic 09. Oops, I'm not in shot. Uh, yeah, just one second. I'll be right there. Okay, <laughs> that's better. So that is a little bit of what Basic 09 can do. And if you already know BASIC, then it's not a big leap to get into programming on this. Uh, you just have to fire up Nitrous 9 Ease of Use, type in your BASIC 09, and boom, you're into programming on it. I do highly recommend taking a look at the documentation, and I will be going over a lot more of the programming stuff in future videos. But I hope you enjoyed this little niblet of what it can do. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, the subscribing, and or the commenting below. Because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. But I will see you next time.